This video is for 6.5 day one, linear inequalities. Our goals are that we can graph linear inequalities in two variables, and we can also use linear inequalities when modeling real world situations. So these are our goals for day one and day two of this section. Let's begin by talking about what a linear inequality is. It is an inequality in two variables whose graph is a region of the coordinate plane that is bounded by a line. So as you can see, there is a picture on the top right. That is a linear inequality. And you can see that it's dashed and it's shaded above. And we'll explain, I will explain in just a few moments how we do all of that. Now that we know what a linear inequality is, let's talk about what a solution of an inequality is. It is any ordered pair that makes the inequality true. So you can see at the very bottom right we have another graph and each ordered pair that's in the yellow area and on the solid red line is a solution of this given inequality. So we no longer just have one answer. We have infinitely many. So now let's take a look at example one. Is the ordered pair a solution of y is greater than x minus 3? First of all, we want to label our points, x and y, and let's rewrite the inequality. Now remember, a solution works for the inequality or makes it true. So we're going to plug in the 1 for the x and the 2 for the y. So that means we have 2 is greater than, question mark, not sure, 1 minus 3. What is 1 minus 3? That is negative 2. Bring down the 2 and the greater than symbol. Is 2 greater than negative 2? Yes, it is. So therefore, 1 comma 2, this coordinate point, is a solution. And if we graph that line, this point, 1 comma 2, would be in the shaded area. Now let's take a look at part B, x comma y again. We're doing the same thing. x is greater than x minus 3 plug in the negative 3 for the x and the, and the negative 7 for the y. Negative 7 is greater than question mark. Not sure yet. Negative 3 minus 3. Negative 7 is greater than negative 6. This is not true. It's the other way around. Negative 6 is actually greater than negative 7. So that means that this point, negative 3 comma negative 7, is not a solution. So there you have it. We have an example of a solution and a non-solution. Now let's talk about how to graph linear inequalities. This is a really nice organizational way to talk about it. So first of all, step one, solve the equation for y, because it's much easier to graph it. Step two, graph using slope and y-intercept, stuff that we relearned in chapter five, and you also learned it last year in your math class. Step three, figure out if it's a solid or dashed line. Step four, shade, where we're supposed to shade, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. And lastly, don't forget about hoi vux. Um, if you have a horizontal line, then the equation is going to start with a y. And if you have a vertical line, the equation is going to start with an x. So there you go. Now let's shift our focus towards the top right section now. If the symbols are a less than or equal to, a greater than or equal to, or an equal to, then we have a solid line. That just means there's no holes in the line. If we have a less than or a greater than, we have a dashed line, and a dashed line looks like this border right here. If we have the symbol greater than or equal to or greater than, then we shade above. That would make sense because the numbers are bigger. And if we have a less than or equal to or a less than symbol, we shade below because the numbers are smaller. So remember, we want to get the y by itself. And in this example right here, the y is already by itself, which is really nice. So now let's take a look at this. We want to, first of all, uh, decide what the slope is. It is 1. m equals 1. And the b equals negative 2. So first of all, let's plot this y-intercept is at negative 2, slope is negative 1, or sorry, positive 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, etc. Connect 
Oh, should we do a solid line or a dashed line? Take a look at that symbol right there. There is no line underneath, so therefore we're going to write a dashed, draw a dashed line. So you should write that down. And then also the greater than symbol means we're shading above. So now let's do a dashed line through these points. and we will shade above. So any point that is in the shaded area is a solution. However, the points on the dashed line are not solutions. That's what dashed means is that we're not in including. And it also makes sense that there's no line underneath the symbol greater than. Okay, let's try this in one more example. This time we have 2x plus 2y is less than or equal to 6. This time, unfortunately, the y is not by itself, but have no fear, we know how to do this. We want to get the y by itself. So first of all, let's subtract the 2x, minus 2x to both sides. That means we have 2y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 6. One more step, divide by 2 to everything. Divide by 2, divide by 2. y is less than or equal to negative 1x plus 3. So there is our inequality in slope-intercept form. Now let's talk about the symbol right there. That symbol has a line underneath, so that means we're going to have a solid line. And it's a less than symbol, so that means we're going to shade below the line. Okay, a couple more details. The m is a negative 1 over 1, and the b is a 3. So let's plot the b, up 3, there's the y-intercept, and now we're going to go down 1 and to the right 1. Down 1 and to the right 1. And we're going to connect with a solid line, because there is a line underneath the symbol, less than or equal to. And lastly, we're going to shade below, because it is a less than symbol. And because we have a solid line, not a dashed line this time, the points on that line are solutions. And remember, the famous plug it in phrase works for this. Um, you can plug in any point in the shaded area or on a line and it will work for this inequality. We're going to continue with linear inequalities and we're going to start with problem three. The question is, what is the graph of each inequality in the coordinate plane? And as you can see, there's only one variable involved whereas yesterday we talked about two variables at a time. So we're actually going to be using our Hoy VUX acronym that we've used before. And since it's starting with an X, we're going to use the VUX part on the first one and then Hoy on the second. Since it's starting with an X, that means we're going to have a vertical line. And it's going to be going through negative 1. So first of all, plot the negative 1. Now take a look at the, there's no line underneath that symbol. So that means we're going to have a dashed line. And it's going to be vertical. So make a dashed line now with arrows at the end. And lastly, we need to figure out where are we shading. And the shortcut that I'd like to show you um, is that when the X is on the left side, that symbol points towards where you're shading. So as you can see, the, the greater than symbol is pointing towards the right. And that is where you shade. And I'd like to show you a mathematical way of figuring out where to shade as well. And the mathematical way is to find a test point. Usually, 0, 0 is a, like a really nice test point because it's super easy to plug in. So make sure you write this down. We're using 0, 0 as a test point. Just plug in the 0 for the x. Is 0 greater than negative 1? Yes, it is. So that means we're going to shade on the side that contains 0, 0. And as you can see, 0, 0 is the origin and, and it is in the shaded area. So that completes part A. Now let's talk about part B. We have the equation, or rather the inequality, y greater than or equal to 2. So first of all, yes, this is a horizontal line because it is starting with y. And this time, there is a line underneath, so that means we are going to definitely be having a solid line rather than a dashed line. 
So go to the 2 on the y-axis and draw a solid horizontal line through 2. Now the question is where to shade. Well, think about it. If it's greater than or equal to 2, that means the numbers that are bigger than 2 will be the answers besides 2 itself. Now I'd like to show you the mathematical way again. Let's use 0, 0 once again as the test point and plug it in and see if it works. So 0 greater than or equal to 2, no, that does not work. It's not true. Therefore, 0, 0, which is at the origin, the center, right in the center, right here, is not in the shaded area. This is basically a summary of what we talked about yesterday in day one. Uh, when a linear inequality is solved for y, which means y is by itself, the direction of the inequality symbol determines which side you're going to shade from the boundary line. So if you have a greater than or equal to or greater than symbol, shade above. That makes sense because numbers that are bigger should be shaded. And if you have a less than or equal to or a less than symbol, you want to shade below because the numbers that are smaller are the ones that work. Now let's take a look at our application problem. I know you've been waiting for this, wondering how this applies to everyday life. Well, for all of you interior decorators, this problem is for you. You are going to remodel a kitchen. The wall above the stove and the counter is going to be redone as shown in the picture. The owners, aka you, can spend $420 or less. So now, first of all, we want to write a linear inequality, which is going to require us to define variables, and then graph the solutions, and then after that, we're going to find three possible prices for the wallpaper and the tiles. As you have noticed in the picture, there is a tiled area and a papered, wallpapered area. So we're going to have our variables. X is going to be the cost per square foot of wallpaper, and Y is going to be the cost uh, per square foot of tiles. Now, let's talk about the values that we see in the picture. For the wallpaper, let's focus on this area right here. The area of that section is 24 square feet. So we are going to have 24x, and then we're going to add the area of the tiled area multiplied by that variable. So 24x times sorry, plus 12y, and that must be done for $420 or less. So we definitely want to have a less than or equal to symbol with the 420. Less than or equal to means we cannot go over that maximum of value of $420. Okay, now we want to get the y by itself, like usual. So first step is subtract 24x to the other side. We have 12y is less than or equal to negative 24x plus 420 divided by 12 on both sides. And we get y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 35. So there is our linear inequality. Now we can tell that the slope is negative 2 over 1 and the B is 35. Now let's talk about the less than or equal to symbol means that we're shading below the line and we're also having a solid line because of that line right there underneath. Solid line. Okay, let's draw our boundary line on the graph. Um, you may have noticed it's only the first quadrant. Remember, in most real life scenarios, the first quadrant is used only because that's what makes sense. Negative cost does not make sense. So let's first plot the y-intercept, which is 35. And now we're going to be going down 2 over 1 repeatedly. Now the last 
question says, what are the three possible prices for wallpaper and tiles? Well, basically what you can do is just pick any three pairs of coordinate points uh, in this graph. So the ones that I chose are $5 for the wallpaper and $25 for the tiles. So as you can see, this is a point right here. Uh, $10 for wallpaper and $10 for the tiles. And lastly, uh, $15 for the wallpaper and $5 for the tile. So that also works. And we're not going to be always using the total, fee, you know, $420. It really depends on what numbers you choose. In our last example for today, we are given a graph and we need to figure out which inequality represents this graph. So what I'd like to do first is find out the slope and the y-intercept of this given graph. The slope, well first of all we need to pick two points. The y-intercept is 1 and the slope we can find by starting at the 1 and going up 2 over 1. So therefore the slope is 2. So automatically we can take a look at the options at left and get rid of B because there's supposed to be a 2 right there. Everything else is fine. Now let's talk about uh, what kind of boundary line it has. It is a solid boundary line. There's no dashed lines. So that means that we want to have a line underneath the symbol. And that's going to get rid of option D because there is no line underneath the symbol. Lastly, you can tell that it is shaded below the line. That means we want to have a less than or equal to symbol because the numbers that are smaller than the um, 2x plus 1 are in the solution area. So that means we want to have a less than or equal to symbol that gets rid of option C and our remaining option is y is less than or equal to 2x plus 1 and that is option A that is given to us. So just in summary for that one, it must be a solid boundary line and the symbol must be less than or equal to because the region below the boundary line is shaded. Question for you in closing. How can you determine the correct side of the boundary line to shade when graphing an inequality? You can substitute a test point into the inequality, just like in the past we have plugged in numbers to make sure that they work. And typically 0, 0 is the easiest point to plug in, so that's what I recommend you doing. Okay, that completes this lesson. Feel free to try the lesson check for today. If you don't feel comfortable, please at least try and complete 6.5 day one lesson check. I will be checking for that when I check your notes. See you soon.